Okay, I just realized that I left out something that kind of ties everything in, and I left it out of the explanation. And so I'm just going to add this at the end as a commentary. Remember when I said that the, in the video that the prime, I called it the prime directive, the, the first thing that the most subconscious, most primitive, initial, subconscious part of our intelligence seeks to check and make sure is that the collective exists. The collective is, is the starting point from which everything else reacts or is measured or is noticed. Anything that is disruptive, unstable, remember I made the example of the person that goes out into the ocean and whether it's the person alone on the raft, whether it's the people left on the beach, both will realize the collective is being threatened, the collective is just being disrupted. That's the initial sort of uh, checking mark, you know, the first item in the list for evolution is that my creation stays integral because it knows no other way of being since, since it only creates um, plurality, collective doesn't create an individual as a prototype, like I explained, okay. Um, so, because this is the, the first starting reference, when we create separations, for example, category of different human beings, different people that would be black or Asian, or they're a different kind of human being, it's not what the the mind of the human being is recognizing it's something that we invented we label because we noticed it and we thought it was more determining and more important than what it actually was to evolution and to natural cogniz cognizant intelligence to us who want to explain and, and reinvent the understanding of life and of ourselves and how we're designed we labeled it and we created, we put in the foreground a categorization, just like we did with sexuality. Human sexuality is one sexuality. It, the, 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 you know, there's not, it doesn't get more complicated than that. There is the sexuality of the species. It's called human sexuality. Like in most species on the planet. I don't care if people want to make a case about this little microbe or species that actually has a neutral... 99% of the intent, the cosmic intent of life on this planet is the creation of a fusion kind of amazing, wonderful interaction of two opposites that are equal and disequal at the same time. They're not quite identical, but they're the same and they're, you know, it's mass. Yeah, it's totally marvelous uh, invention of sexuality is constituted by two genders. Now, homosexuality occurs in part because it's two genders, and if you simply take one and put it with the same one, the expression of homosexuality occurs in whatever sexuality, whatever species of sexuality this, uh, this would happen, either, either sought or made to happen, like in prison. So, homosexuality is understood as existing within the sexuality of the species. It is not a different sexuality. It is human sexuality. We're talking about human homosexuality, part of human sexuality. We, however, have created a category, which are gays, or, you know, the, in order for it to work, as logic, we had to establish, and we don't remind ourselves all the time, but this is precluded that uh, you're born that way. God made me this way, as God, Lady Gaga sang, sings so proudly, uh, believing she understands how things are, right? Um, well, you know, really it isn't nature's intent, <laughs> so obviously we can see. If it was an intention to actually destined for optimal expression of the life form, a homosexual sexuality, we could also see it physically. We see that it occurs for reasons which are biological.
biological, mostly after birth, before birth as well. They're just to do with the formative gestation forces in the mother. But mostly we have we start understanding that is about developmental psychology. We left all this for the uh, for in the pursuit of, of substituting a civil ideology that will bring order to our very complex and precocious society, and therefore needed to establish a class of gender, and therefore, and then we became started and we went on a on a rampage. We started uh, saying that because it's fluid, there can be tons of sexualities of genders. In any case, what I'm getting at is whether we invent races, whether we invent gender sexualities, or we invent people that are different because of the religion and nationality they are, they need to be seen as the enemy and they are inherently violent. These are all constructs that we have made in order to re-explain something that is really simple. It was made very simple by evolution, by life creation. Um, because the starting point is the collective, because we start as a plurality, we start as many, and then everything else occurs, and, and we add our reasoning and our explanation for life to that. When we uh, create a racial category or a gender category, our natural unchangeable wiring that only knows and can only because we are made biologically wired this way by eons of evolution we introduce to this oneness which is the collective the idea of a separation it we razzle it we say what i mean evolution says or, or our, our collective oneness at the origin the ultimate truth of the singular singular species says what you have different types of human beings? No, <laughs> you're wrong. Of course, it can't talk to us. So it just simply is left uncomfortable, un unstable, and uh, forced to uh, experience error that we commanded to. In other words, we install a confrontation and a dichotomy that does not have any room or place there to exist. And so we create a, an instability and a discomfort, and we never find peace. And if you look at the, at the gay movement, uh, you know, it's almost like first it was, we just want to be not beat up. <laughs> then, you know, laws were created and everybody in society started saying, oh, I have gay friends and blah, blah, blah. And it wasn't enough. We had to also be married, and we have to be able to adopt kids. And it's almost like this constant quest to go back to where they started, where homosexuality didn't exist, because they want to be normal. They want to be like a man and a woman, and a mother. We, we solved it by saying two moms and two dads that raise a child. And so we can construct the whole pursuit of peace And we do so because we create an instability, an irritation to the oneness that we are. So we create the problem and then we create the need to solve the problem, is what I'm trying to say. We create a situation where there are races and then we're never okay with that because we're one human being. And so as long as we need to say black and white and Asian and whatever, uh, there will always be something somewhere in the great collective of humanity that says, wait a second, but there are people, there are, it's another human being. Why are we saying it's different? Oh, because of how they look or because of the skin and so what? You know, it's like we don't give ourselves peace by creating a problem that we later have to perpetually be fixing and trying to fix and trying to create, reinvent a logic for a type of society, a type of civil principles and laws that will solve this problem that we created that wasn't meant to happen. Anyways, that's the part that I 
I left out of what I recorded before and I wanted to add it. No, I'll just add this as a commentary like I sometimes do when I forget parts to the, to the recording. All right, so long.